Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and in this video uh, I'm going to look at the texturing aspects using ZBrush. So I'm going to switch to a different mesh which you can see here is male character instead. Um, and what I'm going to do with this one is import in some textures. So first off go to your texture options and import any images that you might want to bring in. So I'm just going to import one of these uh, particular images here. Now I've already kind of imported in a number of them before. So what you need to do uh, in order to actually start working on texture on this uh, character is rather than um, having the standard brush with Z add or Z sub where it cuts in geometry, um, what we're going to make use of is the RGB values here. Um, so you need to actually turn that on and turn these off because otherwise you'll start deforming your mesh when you start putting color on the thing. Okay, so um, what we need to do is actually load those textures into uh, a feature called Spotlight. And the way that you go about doing that is go back to your texture menu, um, select one of the images and then click on add to Spotlight. And what will happen is you'll get a very uh, a, an image of the actual thing uh, popping up on your screen. So um, the way that this tends to work is that you've got uh, a reticle, which will allow you to move around your toolbar system. If you click just outside of the reticle, it allows you to move the image around. <clears throat> We've got the scale tool to make the image larger and smaller. Can rotate it round and that's based on the actual reticle so if I move that over the top of the image you can see that I can change my rotation angle. We've got uh, a pin spotlight, don't tend to use that that much. Spotlight radius is for the size of the brush that you're actually going to be making use of and at the moment it, it doesn't really show up because it needs to be in uh, the, the um, method of, of drawing. Uh, we've got opacity which changes the visual representation of the texture here but it will apply fully to your mesh when you start using it and then we've got tile options so you can increase the number of tiles so if you're making some where you needed multiple versions of uh, an image you could use the tiling system and you can do that vertically as well. Um, you've also got flip vertical and then flip horizontal, which can be quite useful for getting even um, textures on both sides. Um, and, and that should be it for the time being, uh, for the tools that you're gonna need on this. So what I'm gonna do is just add a couple more of those textures to the spotlight feature. So I'm gonna select that one and add I'm going to select the side view and add three quarter view, which is an important one and add and also the back of the head. So if I go to texture um, there and add and what you'll see is that each time it turns on this God awful light box feature, um, but it also adds the images along the bottom here. So if you wanted to actually select those images, just double click on them and it should pop into okay it's not you can always just scale it if you need to but it should just select it it's typical right okay um what i'll do is i'll just tile them things to the side and select one and then I can bring that into view. Okay, so scale. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to um, change from matte cap gray to skin shade so that basically um, the image isn't going to uh, be affected by the color that's applied to that actual mesh in the background. Right, so um, actually first things first, I'll start with the front view. 
I'm not sure why that's doing where it is, but right. Um, okay. Right in the front view, then I'm going to um, press Z on my keyboard so that I can edit the mesh and move that around. If you press Z again, it brings back those features. So I'm just going to scale up my texture so that I can line it up with various features such as the eyeballs. So if I press Z, what you'll notice is when I hover over it, you start to see the actual texture underneath. Don't work with symmetry, so turn that off. Shrink down your reticle so that you're working with something smaller and then just start to draw your texture over your object. So yeah, this this texture is actually quite intense with its colours. So it might be better to uh, to find a texture that's not quite as uh, over the top, but it kind of demonstrates what I'm trying to achieve. So. If I wanted to do the other side of the face, what I'd do is I press Z on my keyboard, I'd hover the um, reticle over my image, and then I'd flip the image so that basically I can then line it up with the other side of the face. I'm just gonna adjust that slightly so that the eye is a bit better, and press Z again. And what you'll see is that I can now start blending the other side in to the face. Like so. Okay, so because I'm projecting the information from the front of the face, what you'll notice when I turn the image or turn the mesh is that I start to get this sort of streaking effect. So what I should be looking at doing now is bringing in one of the other images. So if I um, tile these things at the side, one that I'm after is this one. So I'm going to scale that so that it um, is a similar sort of size to the one that I've got here. So in order to do that, I'm going to flip the image size and I'm going to scale it up. Okay, and just rotate it around so that it resembles certain parts of the uh, face. Okay, so the ears are out of line at the moment, but it should be enough for me to actually start kind of blending some stuff in there and working with it. And as you can see, a lot of that information is going on there without too much of an issue. Okay, so we've Getting to this point at the back of the neck, it's going to start streaking again. So I want to take it as far as I can with this side image. But first off, I need to fix this ear. So Z on my keyboard, use the reticle to move the uh, the image so I can line it up with the ear shear. Z again, so I can then project it over the top. Now because the ear didn't line up before, I just need to blend it in at the back here and fix that section. There we go. So if I rotate around that, you can see the difference between the side view and the front view. So that's why we'd use that kind of three quarter thing. What I'm going to do though, because I've already got this texture selected, is flip the image so I can work on the other side. And just get that sorted before I start working on the three quarter. So this time I'm going to start with the ear instead and just project that over the top like so and take the texture down and round the back of the head. And just a bit more on this forehead around the back of the ear. Okay, so right now what I need to do is start blending in this kind of 
three quarter view. So, um, actually I've kind of missed an entire section here, but it's just a demonstration. So, um, what I'll do is I'll get the three quarter view up now. So that should be this one down here, which yeah, works now. I've double clicked on it. it works. Um, so I'm going to mirror that so that it goes to the other side. And what you should be looking to do is try to line up facial features such as maybe the nose. So I'm going to put my reticle there so that everything scales around the nose and try to line it up effectively. Like so. Okay, so if I press Z now, I don't want it at 100%, so I'm going to I'm going to turn it down so I can get a better blend and I'm going to shrink down the reticle size so that when I go over this it's not as uh, intense and I can get a better fade of that actual image should still work so um, just going over the little bits on the corner of the nose so fix that bit blending his, uh, his beard a little bit better and then what I'm going to do is the other side of the face so again come back into your image flip it the other way try to line it up with important features if it's not quite lining up maybe scale it rotate it just however you need it really um, and i'm just gonna rotate it a little bit around that mouth it sits over the top of that scale it up slightly okay so that should now blend in quite effectively around that section as well I'm just going to go over that cheekbone and make sure that that fits in there properly. Go over the bit on the head. It's not quite right there. And then just blend in this cheek again. Okay, so what we should end up with there is a fairly reasonable texture just applied using those three photographs. So if you're going to do this properly, you'd be of making your way around the entire head uh, so that you end up with the appropriate um, images corresponding to the angle that you're working with. But hopefully from this short demonstration you get an impression as to how you could go about actually making use of those tools. Um, and, and basically when you're happy with the overall thing just go to where it says texture and turn off your spotlight feature and that's it, you're back into normal ZBrush where you can edit and play around with the, uh, the mesh as much as you want.